All right, we'll go ahead and start with the causes chart or the fatal flaws chart. Um, there's not a whole lot to add, so this video should be pretty short. Um, but let's start with um, impatience. Um, here are a couple of quotes or kind of instances related to impatience. First of all, um, when Romeo and Juliet were kind of doing their balcony scene and they were um, proclaiming their love for one another, Juliet has a major concern. She says, it's too rash, too, too sudden, too like the lightning, right? Um, and so that was in Act 2, Scene 2. Um, um, so Juliet initially shows concern, but then she, it's in, interestingly enough, she's also the one who um, suggests that if his intentions are honorable, that they get married. Okay. Um, and then if you see the next one in Act 2, Scene 3, um, the friar also kind of warns them against acting impatiently or, or kind of jumping into things too quickly um, about their marriage. When Romeo asks him, hey, can you marry us? Um, he says, hey, you know, be careful, wisely and slow. They stumble who run fast. And so he gives a little bit of a warning, like you guys may be moving a little bit too fast here. As a reminder, the examples that I give you here on this chart are not exhaustive. Um, there are plenty more examples out there. I'm just giving you guys kind of something to start with and something to work with, right? Um, going to secrecy, I think the biggest point of secrecy um, in Act 2 is in Act 2, Scene 6, where they secretly get married. Um, the only people that are aware of this marriage are obviously Romeo and Juliet, the friar, and the nurse. Okay, those are the only people aware of it. Um, but realistically speaking, shouldn't their parents be aware of this? Yeah, I mean, we know that there's complications there, um, but getting married is kind of a big deal, um, and not just a big deal for the two people getting married, but also for the family members involved, and so the fact that this is kept secret from the family, um, I think we all know is, is a recipe for disaster, okay? So there's a couple things you can add to your flaws chart. Um, let's go to the irony and foreshadowing chart. Okay, um, under irony, again, there's plenty more examples here, um, but let's look at this one. Okay, um, the friar only agrees to marry Romeo and Juliet because he really thinks that their marriage, that their union, will help bring the families together. So, in his mind, the marriage is supposed to end the feud. Okay, the irony, and it's dramatic irony here, is that yes, their union kind of does bring the families together. We know that the families reunite because of the prologue, but not in the way intended, okay? Um, it actually takes their deaths, their, their, their joined deaths, um, to bring the families together and to end the, and bury the feud, um, or bury the strife. So it was a little bit, um, yes, it's true, but it's also, um, not, not quite how we want it to go, all right? For foreshadowing, again, there's plenty of other examples, but um, when the friar says they stumble who run fast in scene three, act two, um, we know that Romeo and Juliet's impatience in getting married and kind of progressing their relationship far too quickly um, does lead them to stumble um, in, in the form of their, their deaths, okay? And then again, the friar's words um, in scene six of act two, um, he says, be careful because violent delights have violent ends, right? These things that happen so suddenly and they're good um, can also end just as suddenly in a very, very bad way. Um, and so that is foreshadowing because we know that is what actually happens, okay? Like I said, this is not necessarily the, um, the most exhaustive list of irony and foreshadowing or of the fatal flaws, um, but there are some things for you to add to your charts, um, and that's all I have for you today.